This big ichthyosaur jaw that I found had really dagger-like teeth. And I could just see some of the teeth protruding out, which I picked away at. Here's a large Liparoceros ammonite that I found and someone likened it to a goat horn. See it later on when I play more of the fossil in the video. Welcome to Lyme Regis Fossils channel. My name's Brandon Lennon and I've been saving these fossils here from the destruction of the sea for many years. If the sea washed over these fossils here that you see and ground them down with the attrition of the sand and sea, they would be no more. So I'm out here along the Jurassic coast saving these fossils, especially during the winter months. It was a really joyful day when I found this particular fossil specimen, a nautilus. I plucked it out of the beach area and held it up. This is another nautilus and it's water-worn by the sea's actions, but on the other side, it's been beautifully prepared by at Stone Barrow Fossils. Lizzie Higley did the work on that fossil to prepare it really nicely. Here's a micro Dorosaurus birchi ammonite. Anyone can walk along the beach at low tide and pick those fossil finds up and some petrified wood there. Those fossil finds are fun. And there is some calcite structure in that ammonite. I did some lapidary work on that ammonite and those pieces of fossil wood there to really bring those specimens up. And then I've got a piece of the thin gray layered limestone rock and you can see a pyrite ammonite compared to a calcite ammonite. People always think this marine reptile jaw is a dinosaur jaw. It looks really amazing with those sharp teeth, but it's not. Well, look at the preservation on those ichthyosaur teeth. And I initially started picking away at this specimen the muddy rock was quite soft and I'm really lucky today because a friend has brought over some of the fossil finds that I sold him many moons ago and he's collated these and they're in his collection and I'm pleased to bring them to you to show Here you. Here is a little nodule that I picked up along the Jurassic coast with a green ammonite in which I took some time to polish up nicely with the lapidary utensils that I use. You can see the iron pyrite center that it's got there. This is a good fossil find I made called Microdoroceros birchi with the spines. It's always nice to find a really good ichthyosaur backbone like this one here that I picked up. Here are some lovely fossil ammonite specimens I made along the Jurassic coast. That Asteroceros obtusum there, you can see the lovely calcite structure there and uh, some beautiful suture patterns as well. Here are some calcite ammonites and some iron pyrite ammonites in comparison. The golden ammonites look really beautiful, those individual finds. Here is a really good chunk of petrified wood. Piece of eroded tree on the beach and I'd like to find today some of the agatized and silicified fossil wood from the Cretaceous period. That piece I polished up, you can see that pebble there that I did the work on, the lapidary work to get it polished up. So you could see all the Torito borings there and the structure in the pebble. And here too are some recent fossil finds. Look at that big Canocytes turneri in iron pyrite that I plucked out of the beach area at low tide and some lime bay agate. You can see that beautifully banded chalcedony there from the Jurassic coast. It's all fun and games when you're out fossil collecting. And here I'll show you some ID of ammonites you can find on the beach like that pyrite ammonite there. That's one to pick up every day at low tide. Beef calcite ammonites, you can see those in fibrous calcium carbonate. 
a backbone of the ichthyosaur. It grew up to 60 feet, the ichthyosaur, and swam as fast as the tuna fish and it ate anything that moved back in the Jurassic. There is bone with the honeycomb structure you can see when it's fossilized and quite heavy too, the bone is. A piece of ichthyosaur jaw with those gnarled teeth in. You can see the attrition of the sand and sea has ground down those teeth. And also too, when you're collecting out along the Jurassic coast at low tide, there is an oyster shell, a fossil oyster shell that they used to call devil's toenails an ammonite preserved in the calcite in those thin grey layered limestone rocks and a piece of the sea lily stem, a crinoid. And you can look on side and see those bits protruding out of the mud at low tide. It's a very white layer you can see and pick those bits out. A fossil sea urchin find from the Cretaceous period and a fossil sponge there would have sat up on the reef like so with that stalk and then a coprolite the poo of the ichthyosaur you can see the inclusions in that one the fish scales and a bit of monkey puzzle tree and you can find branches of that with cones on at times when you're heading down through to the beach to look for fossil finds and here is a belemnite the guard of the sea creature the belemnite you can see that sort of tail end piece there it's been shaved down by the attrition of the sand and sea so you can see right into the middle with that brown calcite structure those are fun finds those little bullet like specimens and there on the beach at times you can find a nice little gastropod a fossil shell these are all the fun finds you can make along the Jurassic coast and I've got a rock there and that rock is chert bed made of sponge spicules. Looks a bit like a smiley face that one. That one always keeps me happy having picked that up out towards Golden Cap a long distance I'd walked that particular time. And back to this Liparoceros ammonite. It's really nicely prepared in that large limestone rock it's a really good size look at the comparison of that specimen in terms of it compared to my hand and that I dragged back as a whole nodule and I tried initially to grind some of the surface away to see what fossil was in that large stone you mustn't hit rocks like that those green ammonites can shatter anyway thanks very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked this video and leave your comments in the comment section. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, please do so. Thank you.